Five, four, three, two, one, and we're off. We're off. We're off. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Oh. You know when I when I bite my lip, I mean I'm ready. Mm, mm. I'm ready to express myself. I don't know about you, but um, it's for need help. I was about to go to the second verse. Me and my boy used to have this little singing group. And I used to always fuss at him because he always wanted to do the second verse. We'd be going, mind blowing decisions. Instead of him saying, well, I thought to myself, I get plenty of time. He said, holding hands. So now nah, I brought us the second verse. So yeah, this time I messed up. So yo. Call, I owe you one, bro. Whatever you did is catching now, man. A long time coming. But listen what she's saying. It's what you're doing when you're doing it. What you look like you're doing. Ah. Uh. Oh, sucky, sucky now. I don't know who came up with that saying, sucky, sucky, but I guess it's cool. <laughs> I'm still trying to remember the first girl that made me say, oh, nooky, nooky now. Now nah, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm tripping. I'm tripping. This medication, I must be taking some. Oh, that's what it was. I ain't take my, 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 my medication. Let me blow. Let me put my ears on. Ah. Uh. What? Ow. Uh, 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 uh. Let me just give y'all a heads up. Let me give y'all a heads up. I had something to eat that got me. I must have been allergic to it. Because I've been kind of, um. I've been kind of itching in Canada. So I'm tripping, man. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. What's up, ladies? How y'all doing? Uh, come on and do it. Uh, express yourself. Shake your butt. Shake your rump. Let me see your body dump. Ah, drop that booty like it's hot. Drop your booty like it's hot. hot. <laughs> and right, right here. <laughs> I ain't had nothing to drink, man. It's, uh, I'm just like this. People that know me will tell you. Uh, uh. N-I-O-A-E-I-O-U. Yeah. Spread yourself. Spread yourself. Spread yourself. Spread yourself. Get that up, bang it out, spin, bam, put that up. I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody, uh, 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 a soul singer, an R&B singer called the Lord, especially James Brown. Good Lord. So folks, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, this week, I don't know, man, this is week two or three. I think this is the third week of my hibernation. I'm so confused. I think this might be the third or fourth week of my hibernation. I think we started on the fourth, so I guess this would be like the coming on the third week, or uh, ending on the third week. Um, I want to welcome you guys to the show. Um, I know some people have gone back to work and, and they've been sending me stuff and catching me here and there. And other people just, I guess you guys are worn out. And to be honest with you, I, I'm sick of talking about COVID-19. I'm sick of talking about where we are right now, but this is where we are. So we got to deal, you know, I feel like I'm playing cards and I got to deal a hand that I'm, um, that I'm dealt. That's why I try to open up the show with something lively, with some fun and some games and some 
some tripping and uh, I think I might get get a couple of songs going tonight just because just because uh, I could be your DJ whack a whack a whack a whack um, but no seriously uh, welcome to the show tonight I hope everybody out there is doing okay as for myself I'm hanging in there um, looks like it's gonna storm outside any minute you know so I don't know they're not supposed to have some something being delivered. It hasn't gotten here yet, so I, I might get interrupted in the minute in the middle of this. So I'm gonna try to get it going, and get it done. You know, um, the podcast thing. I, I I really wanted to do something that was more joyful. I wanted to do something because I know everybody's just so worn out with the doom and the gloom. You know, the uncertainty of, you know, this is opening and that's opening. And I have no choice if I'm working. I have to go back to work. And if I go back to work, then I feel like I need to have my hair done. I need to get this done and that done. So um, welcome to Petri Dish USA. You know, we're all organisms in this, this giant petri dish and you know so right now we all stepping on faith but we've for no other reason we want to turn the page just to reduce the stress and have some a sense of certainty because right now we just don't know what's going to happen and uh you know our leaders have made it explicitly clear that the economy is more important than human life um but we know that there won't be any universal testing for COVID-19. So we start asking, what comes next? At some point, we have to accept the things that we cannot change and take charge of the things that we can, those things we can control. Last week, we talked about how COVID-19 and the fear of the unknown can cause everything from anxiety to depression. The week before that, we talked about ending the quarantine and voluntary quarantine and starting the self-imposed hibernation. And it's more about taking charge and the mental behind that, you know, the frame of mind. For some of us, that's easy, you know. Um, for others, you're forced to go back to work. You're forced to go into a life that you're still uncertain about. So I'm sure your stress levels are going through the roof. Tonight, we're going to talk briefly about um, just accepting this uncertainty and moving on with our lives. Initially, I wanted to talk about starting to develop a new norm. And that's what this um, show is about. The title of this podcast was supposed to be a new norm and moving past Corona. But when I thought about the title, I start realizing that we can't move on until Corona allows us to. So it just kind of, it, 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 it's a contradiction. It's a hypocrisy. It's a, it's a state imposed hypocrisy, if you will. They're they're forcing us to move on when we really just want to kind of hang tight and be safe. But then there's something deep inside of us that says enough is enough. So, you know, this is this hypocrisy of sorts, this double standard that we have no control over. And it's the uncertainty. So here's our fate. After being in an involuntary quarantine for nearly three months, how do we start living again? Number one, what will that look like? As more and more places, there's more and more places in the economy and eventually the government starts to open up. What does our, our life, our normal life, our everyday life, what does it look like now? How do we form or reform those interpersonal relationships that we once treasured. 
some of these folks we've been talking to uh, on the phone and online and what have you, but now we're, we're kind of ready. And, and what's funny is there are a lot of Facebook friends that I've never met, but now I'm really interested in meeting simply because you guys quarantine with me. You've been my cyber company, so I've probably posted more during this quarantine than I ever did before, and part of it was by design. Um, it was for you, but it was for me as well. I was trying to help people to understand some of the things that I thought I had a better handle on, but then I realized that I'm really stressed as well, you know, just in, in the way that I handle some of my interpersonal relationships. Moving forward, how do we redefine connecting and who will we be willing to take a chance on? In the back of our minds, we still thinking that this is still a matter of life and death. And as long as we're feeling like that, we're going to say, okay, Jane and Barbie is cool, but am I really willing to take a chance of my life with this other person, Donnie. Um, for those like myself, how do we resume dating and when? That's not just something to be asked by yourself, but by your prospective suitors as well. Um, What did this quarantine teach us about ourselves in those close relationships? You know, we all of these things that we, we're taking into account. And I guess lastly, with this uncertainty and the unknown, how do we find a happy medium between caution and, and, and paranoia? Moving forward, I ask myself, what will a new norm look like? And that's why you see me starting to get out and, 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 and meet new people and doing some of the things that I was doing beforehand. Um, personally, in this area of Florida I live in, there's been like 429 cases and only 11 deaths to date. So for the last three or four days, nobody's died. For the last week, only three people have died. And that sounds crazy when I say only, but this area encompasses 70 miles north to south and about 26 miles east to west. So that's a large land area, but we're not as densely populated as they are in Orlando or in Atlanta or New Orleans, my hometown. So some of my concerns are a little less critical than areas that have more people dead than the cases that we have. And I can understand that. So I'm not being selfish when I come up with some of the things that I say. What I'm trying to do is, is help you guys to, I'm trying to give you the information to make educated decisions and choices for yourself. So that's where we are. The truth of this matter is, there's been so many conflicting stories that it's evident that the scientists are still trying to figure this out. What's even more evident is the leaders could just give a shit. You know, all they care about is, you know, the the money aspect of it. To the poor people, we're just as concerned, and therein again lies this contradiction. Where do we draw the line that we throw caution to the wind to earn a living? And if something happens to us, then what happens to the people that we're responsible for? All of these are conflicts that we have to work out within ourselves. And that's why last week I talked about the mental side of it, because I know what it feels like just dealing with myself and, and my children and my grandchildren. Folks, we can't lock ourselves away indefinitely. We can't. We cannot be so afraid to die that we forget to live. 
Truth of the matter is, man starts to die the day he's born. Some just make it to the finish line a whole lot sooner than others. So there's no fairness in, in, in that. There's no fairness in this thing that we call life. So if anything else, I think this corona pandemic is how it's been managed kind of teaches us that we have to make choices for ourselves. I said, do your own research. I try to give you some things and I send you stories, I post stories to give you some places where you can start to do some research and finding out some of the answers. Um, not everybody's going to have the, going to be privy, a privilege to the information that Dr. Fauci and, and some of the, the government officials, the so-called leaders are, are privy to. But even with them, there's still so many unanswered questions. So you have to make choices for yourself. Don't just look at stories that support the things that you believed or exploit your fears. Be open-minded and look at this issue from both sides. That's the only way you're going to learn something. That's the only way you'll really be able to make rational decisions. After you do those things, then evaluate the pros and the cons for yourself. Um, I stopped watching a lot of the, the so-called updates online because online and on TV simply because I see a lot of people who have exploited this disaster to promote self, and I just don't think that's cool. So when I see it, I shut it down. I've been getting a good portion of our news from um, places like M NPR and BBC. So the National Public Radio is, is, is not run per se by a conglomerate, a media conglomerate. So they don't have a board of directors saying, you know, we have to sell market shares. They're just kind of giving us the Joe Friday and the Walter Cronkite news, just the facts. And I think that that's what we need. Um, once I get the, the tools and once you get the tools, once you get the information, once this information is communicated to you, then you can make a decision. Look at the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. My mom used to say, if you plan for the worst, then, you know, you'll be okay. I used to say if you plan for the worst case scenario, then everything else falls within the spectrum. So I kind of improved on some of the things that my mother taught me. Moving forward, all we've been talking about, in the beginning we talked about hand sanitizer and toilet paper, and we saw just how much that helped. Now all we're hearing about is masking and social distancing. I personally say, I personally say this, you should focus on strengthening your immune system and those that you're responsible for. That means eating right, and I keep saying this every week, and I'm going to say it every week, eating right, getting a certain amount of exercise, getting your vitamin D from the sunlight because it helps the boot, boost the immune system. If we boost that immune system, then we can kind of deal with some things. Then I started looking at this from a sheer numbers. When you look at who we know, and I'm going to use this example. If I go on... Um, somebody's one of my Facebook friends and I start looking at their friends and I said, wow, I didn't know he knew so-and-so and so-and-so. So I could call this person and say, well, how do you know this? And how you know that? And they said, well, you know, I knew this person from here and I knew this person. So no matter how big our world is, we only got, it say six degrees of separation. I say, because of social social media and online, I said it's probably been more like two or three degrees of separation. 
Because we are so closely connected, both literally and figuratively, I'd be willing to bet if we were actually testing, if there were a way that we could we could just touch someone and figure out if they have been exposed, I promise you we've been exposed to at least three to five people in the last three to five months that we've been dealing with this. For the last three months, we've known about it, but this has been around since the beginning of the year. So in that time, we've come in contact with at least three and probably closer to five people who would test positive if we were actually testing. So we have to ask ourselves, and this is what I do, I have a scientific method way of, of, of rationalizing and figuring things out, and I'm going to teach you how to do it. First, I ask myself a question. Then I look at the question from both sides. So the first question I ask myself, for the sake of argument, I came in contact with, if we meet, if we bump into about eight people a day, and of those eight to 10 people that we come in contact with, one of those people is positive at some stage. So that increases the numbers exponentially, but we're just going to cut it back for, for safety reasons, well, for ease, and say that it's been five people that we've come in contact with. So for the last five months, we're going to say for the sake of argument, each month we came in contact with one person who, if they were tested, would test positive. Now, they were probably asymptomatic themselves. So that just kind of lets you know. So the question I ask myself, if I've come in contact with at least five people that are positive in some shape, form, or fashion, why did I not get sick? Then I ask myself, what am I doing right? And it goes back to those things I talked about before. Eating right, trying to get some sleep, because I, I sleep when my body tells me it's tired, getting some exercise, getting some, um, keeping my body hydrated, getting some vitamin D, that sunlight, and I, keep, I can't over express that. Um, and then I look at my hygiene. I've been telling you guys from the beginning, I got three containers of, of hand sanitizer and they've never been open. I believe in that old school thing. I've got dial soap, <laughs> the good old antibacterial soap. I went back to that. I got Comet, you understand? No more Fabuloso, not taking anything from it, but that little sweet smelling liquid, I don't know what 1% cleaning fluid, Give me some old school comet, let it get a little moist, and let that marinate. And let me get my brush and, and clean it the old-fashioned way. So this is something that I've been doing for a while. So when this came into being, I said, well, a lot of those things I was already doing. So now I just need to consciously do them more. So I'm asking myself, these are some of the things that I'm doing right. And this is my methodical way of figuring this out. And it gives me some peace of mind. Maybe it'll help you. So my hygiene. I go from taking maybe one shower a day to two or three showers now. Cleaning. Like I say, I clean my body with the dial soap. I use the antibacterial hand wash. And you understand, I use Comet on my... <laughs> On my cleaning surfaces, be it the sink, the shower, the, the toilet, the tub, the face bowl, all of those things. And then I say, how do I move forward? As I move forward, who do, how do I deal with the things I cannot control? So that's where we are. If I can handle the things that I can control, the things that I, I uh within my privy, then it makes it easy to deal with those other things. So then I ask myself, and I'm, and I'm going to enlist you guys with this. 
Now that we've made it through this first wave, what have we learned that encourages us to move forward? Cleaning, hygiene, it's not just about hand sanitizer and toilet paper now. We are, we're actually talking about sanitizing and, and deodorizing and, and disinfecting and cleaning things. We're much smarter and we're much tougher than we give ourselves credit for. So for a minute, I want to give you guys a round of applause. Um, and I want you to look at yourselves and pat yourselves on the back for the things because we're here to talk about this. We've been doing some things right and we can improve upon those. The other thing is about 90%, and I'll go further, maybe 95% of all of my friends have some type of spiritual connection. Now, I've got Church of God in Christ, I've got Baptists, I've got um, Muslim, I've got some Catholics, I've got all of these friends from all of these different denominations, but they all have some type of spiritual connection. And this is where we go when we start to um, renewing our strength. You know, um, I know the Bible better than I know the Quran. But I know one thing, it says, if I just hold my peace, you know, you know, I can renew my strength, let the Lord fight my battle. So I'm not going to go into, you know, Psalms and all of this. I'm just going to say that's important when we move forward. It gives us the confidence, the things that we can control, you understand, having faith in the things that are beyond our control. That's why our spirituality steps in. And it gives me the confidence to face tomorrow. I and you should not allow fear to paralyze us. We got to move out. They're forcing us out. You know, it's like being a little bird in the nest and the mother bird. She don't ask you, do you think you're ready to fly? She just kind of pluck you from the, um, <laughs> from the nest. Sometimes the little birds fall to earth. They're not quite strong enough or they don't have the confidence. Usually, they step out. They flutter, but then they find their way back up. And that's what we have to do. We listen to the updates to get the information, but then we have to separate the facts from the sensationalism. Nowadays, you know, every newscaster want to deliver the news with a cliffhanger. You know, like you're not going to come back after the commercial. When they do that, it, it irks my nerve and I turn it off and I go find the information somewhere else. I didn't call, you know, to talk to a person. I tuned in because I needed to have some information. Just the facts, man, just the facts. So I shy away from people that have a tendency to exploit this crisis to promote themselves or to sell shares, media market shares doing this. Um, you see me starting to go out. You see me out without my mask. You see me starting to meet people. Um, I look at everything. Like I said, I looked at the area I lived in, um, 70 miles north to south and 26 miles east to west, and I say, in that area, only 11 people have died. I use rationalization, and I say, in the last five months, I feel comfortable in saying I've come in contact with at least five people that have tested positive. So I know my immune system, I'm going to keep on doing the things that I've been doing, but I don't make foolish decisions. We got some lightning and thundering outside, folks, say so if... If um, this goes up, hopefully my uh, sprint will still be working. I might lose my connection, but that's about it. So these are the things that we have to do. I see my lights blinking, so this might be the first time that I do a podcast in the dark. So I think I'm going to hurry up and try to get this done. Um, folks, when we think about this, that's not much that we have control over, but our own lives. So what do we do? 
We keep on doing the things that have taken us this far. We expand upon the things that we're doing right so that we can go further. We think about the interpersonal relationships and we move on. <laughs> I feel like my grandmother. Boy, I cut that thing off. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this short and sweet, folks. I want you to take a minute. I want you to remember the things that you've done well. I want you to, to pat yourselves on the back. I, I know some of you have to go back to work. So as you do that, um, make choices and decisions that make sense. You can do that rationally. Do that logically. Don't let the emotion of the moment take over where your head is. Don't let the fear paralyze you. Don't let, allow the uncertainty of the moment to cause you to have unnecessary anxiety and push you into a depression. So I'm not kind of preaching. I'm just encouraging. Um, as always, I thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to get out before um, Mother Nature comes in. But I want you guys to think about some of the good things that we've been doing. You guys have held me down for the last three months. Hopefully, I've held you down for the last three months. And we've been quarantining. We went from a quarantine to a self-imposed hibernation. The hibernation we have control over. Moving forward, those that can keep on hibernating, you understand, do so. To those people that have to work, that are forced to go out, make good choices. Excuse me, make good choices based upon the things that you've learned in the last three months. When you get your news, try to get your news and the information because communication is key. Um, I'm going to keep on giving you stories. I'm going to keep on posting things that I think are relevant to the situation. But like I say, I, I turn away from the, the NBCs and the CNNs just because they're just too biased. Um, get your information. Make logical decisions. Keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your support. As always, I'm here for you because you're here for me. And parting, as always, love, peace, hair grease. See you next week. Before I go, I'm going to encourage you to go to my YouTube channel. Um, Go ahead and check out the podcasts that are there on my Facebook page. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post the, the link. <laughs> Honestly, I keep hearing my grand boy, cut off them lights. And turn off that TV and sit down in the corner. Like God don't know we sitting in the corner in the dark. But anyway, um, I know from a scientific perspective that lightning takes the path of least resistance. So that's what grandma was trying to say. But she just wasn't about physics. She was about old, what old people talk about. So it's ironic. The, the same things that I'm doing now is, is some of the lessons that I learned from my mother, my father, my grandparents. And this is what has taken me thus far. Yes, Lord. Completely, yes. Okay. So with that being said, go to my YouTube channel. Check out the podcast. Your favorite podcast, go ahead and do a, 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 a watch and, and let others see what has you know, brought you some solace, brought you some comfort, some information that you think they could use. I'll see you here next week, 730p, Eastern 6.30 Central, St. Baptiste time, St. Baptiste place. And with that, I'm getting out of here, folks. I don't know if it's storming where you're storming, but um, I didn't heard a couple crackles. So all jokes aside, thank you, folks. We got this. We really got this. I know we got this because we made it this far. You understand? Um, I guess if... Um, I would say anything. Rance Allen used to have a song that says, I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, 
but I do know that I am going to make it after all, because he who holds the future, he also holds my hand. So with that, good night, folks. As always, I love you because you love me first, and I love you more. Good night. Be careful out there. Keep on doing what you're doing and take care of yourself. See you here next week, same Baptiste time, same Baptiste place.